Good morning, MRGC membership. As you can imagine, the last two days have been quite busy here at the club. A lot of things going on and I have a lot to report to you today. I'll try to be brief, but there is a lot of information that I need to cover. Uh, first of all, coronavirus update, 116,264 cases confirmed in New Jersey, 6,770 fatalities to date, and just this past Wednesday, 329 people perished in that day alone. On a local front, uh, in Brielle, I spoke to the mayor the other day and uh, to confirm that there have been 23 cases in the borough of Brielle, confirmed cases, and they have been consistent for the last three weeks, so no new cases in the past three weeks here in Brielle. Those 23 also do not include discounting those who have been quarantined and are fully recovered. So I could not confirm a number on that, but we know that there's less than 23 cases in Burial. So that, that's a really important statistic and um, we're thankful for that. The other day, Governor Murphy put in his six step road back plan as he called it. Uh, number one was to demonstrate sustained reductions in new cases and hospitalizations, proving a 14 day drop in the curve and until that happens, uh, nothing will be done and the stay at home order does still remain in place. The second part of his plan is to expand testing capacity. The diagnostic plan needs to double the capacity of tests in New Jersey. Third point was to implement robust contact tracing. That's to identify those who've come in contact with an infected person. The fourth point was securing a safe and free place for isolation. Uh, those people who are quarantined, if they're not able to quarantine at home, they're trying to provide a safe and free place that they can quarantine for the minimum 14 day period. Economic health restoration would follow that. Um, governor restarting and um, he has actually started a government restart and recovery commission and essential and safe businesses will be opening first and foremost under that plan. After we get through the first four points, number five and six can then take place and only then. And number six being ensuring resiliency, being fully prepared for the next outbreak of the coronavirus that is inevitable. And there are some researchers so far suggesting that come the cold weather next fall, uh, we will have a spike along with the regular flu virus that's um, apparent every winter and takes place. This will be on top of that and we'll see how that goes. Hopefully not. In addition, the governor has coordinated a regional effort and started a coalition between New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Massachusetts to coordinate efforts to reopen each state's economies and ease restrictions in concert with one another. This Wednesday, as you all know, Executive Order 133 came about allowing parks and golf courses to reopen beginning Saturday at 6 a.m. with certain restrictions. Um, MRGC, under the guidance of President McGlynn, has uh, worked and established a golf course reopening committee. We've met many times uh, virtually as well as just on the phone and much work was done in developing a comprehensive plan to reopen the golf course under what we were all led to believe would follow the New York standards. Uh, we had this plan in process, printed out, ready to go and on Wednesday, April 29th, as you all know, with this executive order, there were a couple of curveballs that were thrown out at us, causing us to go back in and relook at our plan, have several more meetings, and come up with the plan that has been distributed to you via the Clubster app. And on that, I would encourage everyone to read the attachments to that Clubster notification regarding the tea times. It's at the bottom. Some of you may have overlooked that but that has a wealth of information in it. I know Mr. Kelly talked about that in the notice to you regarding tea times at mrgc.com, but please read those attachments. A lot of good information in there. I've been getting some calls regarding pull carts and 
policies with guests and things like that. So most of it is covered in there. Certainly if it's not, please feel free to reach out to me. But the restrictions, restrictions set forth under Executive Order 133 from the governor include other restrictions such as no guests, 16 minute tea time intervals, single use of golf court carts unless it's with a relative if you live in the same household or uh, with a caretaker or someone that resides with you, two people can use the same golf cart. There were guidelines on frequent sanitation of high touch areas, um, especially surfaces, golf cart sanitation, restrooms, things like that. There was guidance in there, retrieving golf balls from the cup, keeping the flag stick, stick in the cup at all times, removing bunker rakes, uh, limiting no caddies and requiring social distancing by all players at the six foot minimum as well as closing all facilities here at the club. So those are the, the criteria that were thrown at us. Those are the things we need to abide by and those are the things contained in our reopening plan. And the reopening plan, as those of you who saw it and read through it, is a three phase plan. It was attached to the club's notification and uh, they do include all those restrictions in that plan. In addition, our first phase includes the institution of a tea time system here at the club. My, to my knowledge, since 1922, there's never been tea times at Manasquan River, but these are tough times and we need to do what we need to do. We were all aghast at only having two sons being allowed to play on the golf course while the coalition that's established with all the neighboring states, all those states are allowed to have foursomes. Why New Jersey can only have twosomes is beyond our comprehension. And we talked about that endlessly, but we thought that in the best interests for the club, the membership, we need to abide by the governor's order. So tea times are tea times with an S at mrgc.com. Today, after putting that out, as you could well imagine, we were totally inundated with hundreds of tea timed requests. We're working through that. Chris and Vince over in the pro shop, um, they're counting them now. They're getting the lottery set to pull for tomorrow and the tea times will be posted uh, in the evening. We also have another meeting this evening with the golf course reopening committee at six o'clock tonight to discuss perhaps uh, some ramifications to the uh, overabundance of requests for tee times when the demand, having only twosomes, we can only fit so many people on the golf course. So we'll, we'll, we will be looking into that extensively this evening. But as, as previously mentioned, the tee times can be made seven days in advance, but within 48 hour at 5 p.m. is the deadline for the next day. Uh, currently, in addition, all the green booklet rules and regulations remain in effect unless otherwise stated. As mentioned, no guests uh, can use a golf course at this time. We're hoping that the future phases that will be uh, lifted and we can have guests play. Uh, we can have no walk-on players at this time. However, if you get home from work in the evening and it's a nice day and you didn't make a tea time request, uh, please call or email the pro shop and if there's availability, we'll certainly try to accommodate anybody and everybody. Member on pull carts may be used at this time until further noticed. Motorized carts um, will be used during the week and they will be used Friday, Saturday and Sundays after 10 a.m. Right now, all association play is on hold, but in concert with the green booklet, Morning tea times on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be reserved for the 18 holers, seniors, and nine holers prior to opening for open play. And open play time will be established by the amount of those persons signing up, and then open play will immediately follow. As mentioned, we, we request that all scores still be posted on USGA GIN, G -H -I -N, USGA G H I N. There's an app you can put on your phone or you can certainly access that on a home computer. So please put your scores in. Um, there are some recommendations during this time that we highly recommend. 
Um, one club said it best in an article that I read right after the governor opened up golf courses, and it was titled, Let's Not Screw This Up. Uh, just to mention, you know the eyes are going to be on the club. There's maybe perhaps a disgruntled neighbor, maybe a jealous non-member, and of course the enforcement officials need to do their job. I did speak to the mayor, who's kind enough to call me, and they have a job to do, and they're going to continue to do it. Um, so we need to be really careful on how we conduct ourselves on the golf course. Uh, we need to maintain a social distance of six feet. Please don't share golf carts unless you're playing with a family member. Don't request someone who's walking to, hey, jump in the cart and move it up for me. Um, that's a no-no right now. Please don't enter any of the club facilities at this time. We will have two restrooms open, but it's really for emergency use. All facilities must be closed per the governor's order. After you're through playing, please take your clubs, towels, shoes, any garbage that you brought here. If you brought a drink with you, please take the bottle home with you and discard it at home. We request that you not congregate after golf. I know it's fun to talk about the round and discuss your score in the parking lot, but please at this time, don't do that. Now, the, it, it's really a common sense of approach. We need everyone's cooperation because the last thing we need here at the club is, is an outbreak of the coronavirus causing the club to shut down, quarantine the club for 14 days, disinfect the club, ocean involvement, and, and that would just be catastrophic at this time. We're taking baby steps and as frustrated as we all are, um, no one more than the committee, that we don't have foursomes out there. We have to look at it again as that glass being half full. At least we're getting out there. We are hopeful and I'm hopeful and optimistic that perhaps in another week or two or three, whatever it may be, the regulation will be lifted and we will be able to have foursomes back there and get back to some kind of normal semblance of, of golfing here at the club. The most important thing really is, please, if you don't feel well, if you're stick, sick, please stay at home, not only for your well-being, but for someone else's, maybe an employee or another fellow golfer, fellow member here at the club. Um, and please know that we can do this together. Hopefully, we'll take the next step to phase two and three soon and our plan and the governor can, will, will amend that order to include foursomes. Um, we have to stay optimistic. Let's do our best. Let's all work together. This is a team effort. We don't want Manasquan River Golf Club being out there as a club that ruined it for everybody and that golf is shut down again by the governor's order, which I, my understanding is they're going to be watching with a close eye all weekend to see how this goes mainly to see if people are social distancing throughout the parks as well as golf courses. And hopefully all will go well so that we don't go backwards. Um, our Club Essentials program, I'll just touch on that real briefly. Uh, it's going tremendously well. First two days of this week, we sold more product than we did all of last week. We continue to get new products in. We have our steak dinner, Mother's Day offerings, um, Ryan did a virtual wine dinner, was very successful the other night, so we have a lot of new things coming out. Please keep an eye on the Clubster app for that. Uh, Jessica has informed me that about 30 people today alone signed up for Clubster. We encourage you to do that. That is our most effective mode of communication at this time. We're going to be, as changes to the golf course, changes to the club, we're going to be putting them out on Clubster first and foremost. So that's the way to get the up-to-date information as quickly as possible. Um, there was established a little do's and don'ts. Nobody likes to be told what you can and can't do. But these are important things that were attached to that email. And we really need to pay attention to these things. They're helpful for everyone's well-being as well as the overall perception and optics of here what's going on at the club going to be a lot of people who are envious of the golfers of the club hey they're able to go out walk go on parks play a sport so be mindful of that and let's do it the right way um, so until then be well stay safe and on behalf of the board of trustees the golf course opening committee 
and the entire staff. I want to thank everybody in advance for their understanding and cooperation in this matter. And together we can do this and get it done with patience and understanding. And it's all well appreciated. Thank you so much. And until next week, be well.